Well, I guess it's to be expected recently since uh, President Barack Obama has been reelected. I've heard a lot of chatter that uh, he is now the expected Antichrist to come. And he's not the only candidate. Of course, there are others that are out there that uh, also uh, are proclaiming other things. But, uh, you know, I've run across a few prophecy websites whose very existence depends on a particular political figure turning out to be the Antichrist. Two rather uh, large websites that uh, surfaced within the last 15 years declared that U.S. President George Bush and high uh, representative of the uh, Union, the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, uh, ha Javier Salena, remember him, would be the future Antichrist. But as we know, President Bush came and went uh, without uh, any whimper of world domination, and uh, now Javier Salena, he is now retired and is uh, resting in retirement. You know, many seem to believe that they will be able to identify the Antichrist by his character characteristics before the rapture of the church. Well, personally, I do not believe the Bible supports that the Antichrist will be identifiable before he is revealed. In fact, this is what Second Thessalonians 2, 3 and through 7 says. says it, leads, it leads me to believe that the falling away must occur first when the Antichrist will be revealed. Now, of course, many believe that the falling away is more of an apostate falling away, such as the church falling away from uh, its devotion to God. But earlier in... Uh, Second Thessalonians 2 it indicates that the Antichrist would be real, revealed until the restrainer is removed. Now, in the Bible prophecy world, there are two conflicting uh, interpretations. Some believe that this falling away, like I said, means that there will be an apostate falling away of the church, then the Antichrist will be revealed. But the scripture indicates earlier in the chapter, as I said, that the Holy Spirit must be removed. So the falling away must mean departure. And that's how I interpret it because uh, I believe that it will be a pre-tribulation uh, period rapture. And until someone uh, in the post-tribulation period rapture camp can tell me how and who will be who will populate the millennium, that has, still has not been, been uh, shown to me yet after all these years of asking the same question. Now, one post-tribulation rapture Theorist has come forward to give me a biblical answer as to who will populate the millennium. That question is is basically unanswerable if you are a believer in the post-tribulation rapture. It cannot be answered. So I have to go and stick with what makes sense, and that is that once the Holy Spirit is taken from the earth, which means the rapture of the church will take place, which Second Thessalonians 2 states, when Christians are taken from this world who house the, the Holy Spirit, uh, then the Antichrist will be revealed, and not until. But just for the sake of exploring this issue of Barack Obama being the Antichrist, I thought I would throw in some of the pros and the cons of how, why he could very well be the Antichrist. And of course, I'll start with the pros. And here's one pro that some of you may not have looked into uh, over the years, but when Barack Obama first became the president, he came in as a president of peace. He came in in a whirlwind of peace. In fact, before he even became president, before he was even inaugurated, he was awarded the coveted Nobel Peace Prize. It is believed by many uh, Bible prophecy scholars that the coming Antichrist will come in on a wave of peace. He will be a peace politician or ruler. And looking at uh, Daniel 8:25, it says, "And through his policy, it's just talking about the Antichrist. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of uh, of princes, and, but he shall be broken without hand." Pro number two says he will be the uh, head of the last form of Gentile world dominion. And that's found throughout uh, Revelation 13, chapter 13, in fact. In fact, in describing the Antichrist, says, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? 
And down in verse 7 of chapter 13 says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now there's no question, there's no doubt right now that uh, President Barack Obama is the most powerful man uh, in the world. And the U.S. is certainly the world's only superpower. No one can really stand up to this great nation. And it's further stated in Revelation 13, 8, it says that uh, his influence uh, will be worldwide, uh, for he'll rule over all the nations. Now the next pro would be uh, he has eliminated three rulers in his power, and that's found in Daniel 7:24, in which he will subdue three kings. And some attribute that to the three kings of being Egypt, uh, Libya, and some believe that the next king will be Assad of uh, Syria. Next, he is personally, he is marked by his intelligence and persuasiveness. Found in uh, Daniel 7, verse 8, uh, and Daniel 8, 23. Now, this is just a brief overview of some of the things that have been addressed uh, that I've seen listed uh, in my uh, some of my comment sections. Now, let's look at some of the cons of why he's probably not. Number one, his manifestation has been hindered or is being hindered by the restrainer or the Holy Spirit, which is found in 2 Thessalonians 2, 6, and 7. And as stated earlier, I believe that there will be a pre-tribulation rapture, so his appearance will not be manifested until after the departure, which is found in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Now, since he rises up out of the sea, uh, that indicates that... He will be a Gentile as opposed to a Jew. That's found in Revelation 13:1, And it also states in Daniel 9:26 that uh, his rise will be from the Roman Empire since he is a ruler of the people who destroyed Jerusalem. So it is very likely that he will be from the European Union as opposed to Rome itself. And I don't rule out the fact that he could be from Rome as well. So that would eliminate uh, the president to, of being the Antichrist, that would be one con, since the U.S. is not a part of the European Union or the old Roman Empire. Now, of course, you can manipulate it any way you want to, but the bottom line is, as the Bible says, and clearly as it can be, that the person who rises up as the Antichrist will be from the people who destroyed Jerusalem. Now, the Bible also says that he will be a head of a ten-kingdom nation empire. Now, this is where the theory that... Uh, the three nations are Syria, Libya, and Egypt fall apart. Let's uh, turn our, in our Bibles to uh, Daniel 7:24. This is talking about the Antichrist and his kingdom. It says, "And the ten horns out of his of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings." Now, what this is saying is that uh, of the ten nations, when at some point in time. Uh, he is going to have to subdue three of the ten nations and uh, those three kingdoms will be within his ten kingdom uh, of nations. Now of course there may be some who say well who says that they have to be three kingdoms within the ten? Well that's simply how it's always been interpreted but uh, if you don't if that's something you can't accept then we'll go on with the next one. Now here's what I believe is the greatest con to Barack Obama being the Antichrist. Now it says that uh, the Antichrist, this ruler, at the time of his rise to power is elevated through the instrumentality of the harlot which consequently seeks to dominate him. Now this harlot is basically known as Mystery Babylon. Now of course many of you know I believe that Mystery Babylon is the U.S. But let's just suppose for one moment that uh, Mystery Babylon is not the U.S. but is the kingdom of seat of the Antichrist would be Barack Obama's kingdom seat. Well, whoever this uh, mystery Babylon harlot is, the Bible says in uh, Revelation 17:18, and the woman which thou sawest that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That would mean that during Barack Obama's next four years that the U.S. would have to become a come second fiddle to another nation because it says right here that this mystery Babylon uh, reign, will reign over the kings of the earth. Well right now the United States reigns over the kings of the earth and I don't think there's any doubt about that. And it also depicts the harlot, the mystery Babylon, as riding the beast which would mean that 
the beast is subject to the the whims and wishes of the harlot and at some point uh, the antichrist and his ten kingdoms will go up against the uh, mystery babylon and destroy her and it says in verse 12 of chapter 17 and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings and going down to verse 15 it says and he saith unto me the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for god hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled and as, as I said before and verse 18 concludes with and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth so if Barack Obama is the Antichrist and the US is one of his kingdoms is a and his is his kingdom seat according to this scripture the US would have to form a ten nation alliance fall from grace as the world's only single superpower because the bible says in verse eighteen of chapter seventeen and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth so mr babylon would have to become the top nation the top dog in the world and dominate the beast until the beast or the antichrist and his ten, uh, ten kingdom nation which scripture says will one day uh... come upon the beast and uh... destroy it and burn it which is found in verse sixteen of chapter seventeen so as you can see this point alone i think pretty well eliminates barack obama from uh... becoming the antichrist and if you still believe he's the antichrist after all of this i'd like to know who you think this great whore is that will dominate him as it states in verse eighteen because it's clear scripturally it says that the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth so you're gonna have to come up with somebody some nation that is gonna dominate the united states and hold it in subjection up until the ten kings destroy it uh... in the latter part and if you have, still have questions uh... email me or leave a comment because from your emails and your comments it allows me to study certain things that i may not have thought about and to address questions that may not have come to my attention so don't hesitate to question some of the pros and cons that i've come up with and as always i like to uh... conclude by saying that uh... the lord is coming soon and unless you know him you're going to be left to go through the most horrible time this world has ever known but worse than that you could die today and if you die today where would you spend eternity heaven or hell you know it's a tragedy that many in this world continue to reject God and his plan of salvation you know that Jesus died for your sins he died not only for me but died for you and everyone who is listening at this point in time and through his death he has made a way for us to have fellowship with God but in order for you to have that fellowship you need to accept him as Savior you need to believe in your heart that he he rose from the dead repent of your sins and accept him as Savior and this day forward live for him it is because he died that we can live forever in heaven and I hope and pray that you've made that decision for Christ and if not uh, please do so because I believe that your time is certainly running out this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report